you know, Ken, last year at Aerospike uh, Summit, you, you gave a talk and part of it was about bursting into the cloud, you know, from, from your on-prem, if you will, and, and sort of moving the workload into the cloud and, and then pulling it back. And, and um, now I think that you guys have gone all in in the cloud. Can you talk a little bit about um, what made you move more aggressively to the cloud like that? Yeah, surely. So we, um, a couple of years ago, we started our own holiday called Way Day, uh, which in late spring, deep discounts, no competition, basically. So we didn't know exactly how it would go. It ended up being more successful than we could ever imagine. Um, we ended up, this is before we moved everything to the cloud, we ended up scrambling for resources, uh, for compute resources uh, to make everything work. So then from then on, we decided to uh, burst more into the cloud. And we said for next year's way day, we would run everything in the cloud. So in one year, we were able to, to do that, move everything there. Um, and Aerospike was, was pretty much running uh, in both places, on-prem and in the cloud and pretty easily to do so on our side. Uh, we use Terraform to configure all of our instances, uh, make changes in, in the actual Terraform code, which um, creates all of our clusters. Um, and it's also good to burst that way because uh, like Eric said, we have a lot of different spikes uh, for Way Day. Also this month we're doing almost doubling the sales. So these days, every day is like way day. And so it's easy to, uh, you know, for better or worse. So it's good. And we're actually, since we planned ahead and, and we're able to um, utilize the cloud, uh, everything has gone off extremely uh, smooth. So um, the advantages there of using that with Aerospike is uh, easily scale up or down and uh, control our cost um, for what we have. So, um, we've been talking about it, 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 sort of talking around the notion of choosing instances and and defining it, you know there's headroom in terms of the scale out capabilities of a distributed database but there's also the question of how much headroom do you put in for your network capacity for storage capacity and compute capacity on nodes and and how do you guys think about that yeah i mean we we start out with not really a definite budget in the cloud. Uh, we said, you know, let's just get this thing going and see where it goes. And now we're kind of really con uh, cost conscious on our instances. Um, you know, as you know, in the cloud, it's very easy just to say, hey, let's add some more instances. And then all of a sudden you get the built in in the month and it's a lot more than what you, what you thought it would be. So we don't necessarily run Aerospike, you know, redline it or anything, um, but we run it slightly under that um, to watch all of our, our cost. Instance wise, we've, um, started out with, you know, N132 instances, working our way up to uh, 64 CPU instances. Uh, this 16 drives option that was just now added to Google is, is a good thing. And we partition those out for better performance. Uh, so that's been good. We're also looking, interested in using, um, you know, some of the new instances, the C2, N2, or the M2 uh, ones to see how those goes. Um, but you know, it's just all a matter of keeping an eye on everything. We use the Aerospike Management Console. We have a lot of Datadog dashboards um, with alerts and, and messages to alert us uh, if we are going over the memory or the uh, disk space for those. And uh, it works out pretty good. So we have instances spread out across five different uh, Google data centers. And of course the uh, XDR replication makes it all very easy to uh, send the data over. And, um, it, you know, there, there is, um, there, there are trade-offs, I guess, I guess in, the, in the data model, if you will, and the amount of network traffic um, and, you know, how many, um, how much data you're pulling back to, to an application at one time and, and, and things. Do, do you spend much time with your development teams uh, discussing that or, or, or is it pretty much uh, transparent to them? Uh, I mean, the biggest thing with, with the data transfer is the XDR replication as far as explaining to the developers, do you want an active-active, active-passive? Um, so when 
some groups write on prem and then only read from the uh, clusters in the cloud. So the data is replicated there. Other groups uh, want to read and write to anywhere and be able to have that data. So you do have to explain that, you know, if you're writing in two different uh, clusters in the cloud at the big exact same time, your final answer might not be the answer you, you thought it would be. Um, so basically just explain that and, um, you know, overcoming there's some network issues, which we overcome. When we first turned on XDR to the Google cloud, we completely filled up the pipe for the whole company uh, from Aerospec. So we've increased that a lot. Uh, so that just tells you the amount of data we're sending over from on-prem uh, to Google. And, um, but overall, I think the developers have been pretty happy with it. And we, um, we do it in a way that they don't really know sometimes that they're in the cloud. So we use a console for the uh, identification of each cluster. So they basically just have a, a constant in their code of the Aerospike entry nodes. And so that code can run in any cluster, either on-prem or, or in the cloud. 